Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the middle of the month love readings. This is going to be for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's get into your reading, Gemini. Let's see what Spirit has for you guys for this month of July 2021. Now your first card here is the Ten of Swords, the Hierophant, the Princess of Swords, the King of Wands, and the Nine of Wands. Okay. All right, Gemini. I see you guys currently going through an ending cycle. Uh, for some of you guys, you may be experiencing like things that have been under wraps for quite a while coming to surface. I see you guys even like maybe even experiencing some type of like depression, some type of anxiety. For some of you guys, be careful, even panic attacks. Um, and I feel that it's a lot of, a lot of hurt and a lot of pain that you have been carrying from past relationships. Uh, this could even represent the ending of a relationship for some of you guys. Uh, there could have been some type of ending or some type of separation. However, I feel that the majority of you are currently experiencing having to deal with something that ended quite a while ago that is really coming to surface, that is really having the need for you to acknowledge those suppressed emotions. And this could be, I'm hearing um, constantly thinking of an ex or constantly thinking of a relationship that came to a conclusion where you may feel like you could have missed some type of opportunity. Um, there's almost like some type of regret or remorse. And I feel that for some of you guys, it's like self-blaming. It's like, I, you know, I didn't react in a mature way or I, if I really wanted to put effort, I could, it's almost like regret is what I'm hearing. Um, but what they're telling you here is don't get lost in that despair, Gemini. Don't get lost in the temporary emotions that you're currently experiencing. I feel that for some of you guys, you've kind of didn't fully heal from this ending or this separation where you kind of just went with the motion. And now it's like it's coming to surface. And for some of you guys, this could have been a relationship that came to an end three years ago um, is what I'm hearing. For some of you guys, it could have been something recent, but I feel that for the majority these are emotions from a past connection that came to an end a while ago. And it's almost like, again, there is a, a revisiting of the past and kind of you've convinced yourself that the outcome could have been different. But what they're telling you here is, no, don't get lost in those emotions, Gemini, because this is temporary. And what's happening right now is that you're going through a cycle that is coming to an end so that you can fully heal and let go of that. But there is a need for you not to get lost in those emotions or the feeling of kind of blaming yourself for something that didn't work out. Now, the Hierophant is here to tell us there is a need for higher learning. This is wisdom. This is experience. This is You've taken whatever this relationship created in your life, some type of understanding. Did it come to a conclusion because you were impulsive, because you were very harsh or very quick to make the decision? Or did they move away and completely, you know, end this relationship um, without fully understanding that there was a lesson in this. So it could be that you're currently going through the acknowledging of those emotions or the, or those feelings, but your partner or person of interest or the person you were dealing with, the Hierophant, this was a lesson for them as well. So when we talk about perfect timing, I feel that on both spectrums, there were lessons to, to be learned from here, from this connection. So it could also represent that the reason why this is coming up is because you see that person moving on or you see them moving on to a higher commitment and there's like a self-blaming type of thing that's going on within yourself, Gemini. But again, this is something temporary. So what they're telling you is embrace the end, 
what is done is done. We cannot undo that, but we learn and it makes us a better person and makes us a better partner for the next person that is meant to come into our lives. Now, I do see that with the Princess of Swords here, there was some type of lesson about knowing what it is that you want. And for some of you guys, it could have been a lesson of knowing when to walk away. Because the Princess of Swords indicates the need to cut something out, the need to walk away from something that is not working. So it could have been that you held on to this relationship far too long, or it could have been that your person held on to it far too long, where you got to the place of being too nasty with each other. So again, the lesson here is to learn when to walk away, to learn when to, I wouldn't say give up, but when we start crossing certain lines, and it start that person or person we're dealing with is bringing the worst in us, that's when we walk away. Because you don't want, obviously, to bring out the worst in each other. Now, I do see here the King of Wands. So you may have been dealing with a Taurus. You may have been dealing with um, another air sign like yourself, uh, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. You may also be dealing with fire energy, Leo, uh, Sagittarius, or Aries. Um, but what they're showing me here is the lesson here, the advice for you is the king of wands. And this is about knowing your power. This is about trusting and being confident in yourself. But it also speaks about the need that when we when there is a situation that is pushing us to rise to the occasion, don't run away from that responsibility or what you would think is like caging you or putting you in the box what they're telling you is if you're fully invested or fully emotionally invested in the situation and you see worthiness in that person it's about being confident and allowing your confidence to lead instead of allowing it to put fears in you where you emotionally detach because you start to fear the worst it's about listening to your heart and following your passion um now, the likely outcome here is the nine of wands. So again, the nine of wands is that of knowing, you know, when to, it speaks about knowing when to put boundaries is what I'm hearing. So what they're telling you is it's okay, as an example, it's okay if you get to a point of, you know, being in love or being emotionally invested in someone requires us to let go of control because you have to give in. And if you don't, then your love becomes conditional. So with the king of wands here, it's about not allowing the fears to take over and to hinder or to play in your mind this scenario of things will get worse so then you walk away before you're the one that's left do you see what i'm saying it's almost like you allow people to get close but not close enough because there is some hesitation there or some type of insecurity and what they're telling you is it's okay to give in fully but it's also okay to have boundaries and that's important okay so i feel that Again, whatever it is that you're currently experiencing in regards to emotions is something that is temporary, but there's a lesson to be learned here. And the lesson is to give in and to follow your passions, to follow your heart, but don't go in blindly. Of course, have boundaries because that's how people respect us. That's how people will know um, that you're giving in, that you're opening your heart that you are wanting to see how far this commitment or relationship can go, but also that you're not going to be there to entertain the idea that they can come in whenever they want and leave. That's why we have boundaries. All right, my lovelies, I hope that this gives you insight, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.